Larry, the NBL has just completed its Heritage Round uh, and it seems to have been a big hit with the, the fans and the, the, uh, the media and uh, the, the clubs and even the players themselves. Are you, was the Heritage Round a success and uh, is the NBL planning to bring it back next season? Look, um, I think it's very important that we, that we always celebrate our heritage and celebrate our, our history. And um, certainly I think that this uh, last past round was a, was a great success and it was terrific to be able to, uh, to tell the public that we, that we value that and we value their support and we value the 34 seasons of, of basketball that we've been able to provide. And it was terrific to get some of the old players back to the league. So I think, yeah, it's a, it's a great initiative and, and something that we'll be looking to continue. How would you rate the success of the season so far? It's been a great year. I reckon um, on the floor, the players are uh, really responding. I think that the, uh, the, the standard of play has lifted another notch again, if not more, uh, this year. So I think it's, a, it's been great. And I think that's, a, that's a, um, a credit to what we've been able to put on the floor as well, as far as the on off the floor with the, with the competition and getting the, uh, you know, the players more settled in, in what they're doing and, uh, and getting the whole league more settled. So that's a, I think it's been great. I think that um, you know all of our numbers are really tracking in the right direction. So I think that um, yeah, I'm I'm really pleased with where we're heading. Well, you mentioned the numbers, and obviously there are some key indicators of, of a, any league's health and things like attendance figures, sponsorship, uh, support, ratings, and online traffic. How are those things performing from a league perspective at the moment? Again, I think everything's tracking really, really well. I think that um, you know our spectator numbers are up marginally, but nevertheless up, and that's always a good thing. Um, you know, and, and, it, and it varies as the season goes on. So I think those sorts of things are great. The um, audience numbers from our, uh, our television rights, our media, online media, all that sort of stuff is just, you know, is just take going ahead in leaps and bounds. So again, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's a response to, the, to, the, to what we're trying to produce and what we are producing and the, uh, and the trust and the, and the value that we're producing out there on the court. Switching back to, to on the court, um, there's always contentious issues around refereeing and officiating during the course of any season. There's been a, you know, yep. a fair share of you know, calls uh, that have been uh, up for question this season. Are you happy with the way that the games have been called so far this season? And it seems that the, the NBL is actually expecting more of its officials in terms of, of taking ownership for uh, any mistakes or, or any errors that they have this season. Yeah, is that the case? It, it's always a really difficult situation with referees. and, and you know, everybody's everybody's got a, a you know one call in the game that they think was wrong or right or you know because of because of the whatever. But you know, I think what we're doing this year is again being even more careful and putting more pressure on their on our referees to get it right where we can. Uh, we've got referees managers. We we you know we're constantly reviewing and uh, and going through all that with every game and with every referee and their performances. So you know, they're, they're out there trying to do their very best as well. It's a very, very difficult game to get right uh, because it is so dynamic. So, you know, I think, um, you know, we're, we're in answer to that, yes, we are constantly scrutinising, but I think that the referees scrutinise themselves just as much. And I think that, um, you know, we're doing everything we can to, to get it right. And it's a, it is a process. It's a matter of time. And we've got some great things in place to, uh, to continue to build it. Paddy Mills uh, leaving to take up a, a lucrative offer in, in China. How beneficial has Paddy's time in the NBL been to the league uh, in terms of raising the profile both here and internationally? Yeah, I've, got, I've got nothing but praise for Paddy. I think that what he's done for us has been, uh, been superb. I mean, he, on the floor, he's really performed exceptionally well and shown his class. And off the floor, same thing. You know, he's, he's been out there promoting the game and giving us everywhere he's played. We've had, we've had great crowds. Um, you know, so he's, he's really done a terrific job, but also just, you know, out there promoting basketball. So. You know, for him to sort of have to take or not, you know, this offer that in China is something that he couldn't knock back. So, you know, we're, again, very supportive of, of what he's done for us and supportive of, of his career. So, um, you know, if it helps, helps him and helps basketball in Australia, that's a terrific thing. So, yeah, nothing but praise for Paddy. Uh, the Tigers have indicated that they actually would talk to Andrew Bogut about as being a possible replacement for, for Paddy. Um, and, and they're also looking at other top level players in Europe for the, from Australia. Um, would the NBL bend the rules to attract someone like Bogut back to the league and, and to, to have them here play here during the lockout? Yeah, I don't know about bend the rules, but certainly, you know, it's, it's, it's shown with Paddy that it's a, it's a massive boost for us to have players of that calibre into our, in our league. And to have, have Andrew playing in the league, Andrew Bogut, would be, you know, absolutely fantastic. But, um, you know, what we, what we are also very keen to do and make sure that we do is to, is to keep the, uh, the equality across the league and to make sure that, that teams don't get ahead of themselves financially. Um, so it's really important that we, that we keep all those in, in line. But 
you know, if there are ways that we can within those those um, bounds, um, you know, get those players to play here in Australia, we'd we'd be doing everything we possibly can because there is great worth in that. But um, you know, it's a, it's a very fine line and it's a difficult situation. It's not something we just sort of throw everything out in order to get that that happening. Australian players are in increasing demand in Europe and even in Asia as well. What can the NBL do to keep local talent here and also to attract Australians playing in Europe back to Australia? I, I think what we are doing now is really building the, the value and the worth of the league and, uh, and the, um, the constant in the league, I think. And that's what players are looking at. Players, um, you know, at the moment we, we can't compete with them financially, the European teams. You know, they're paying much more than we, than we are. But that's something that we need to keep control of at this point in time as well as far as our salaries cap is concerned because it helps with the league overall. But ultimately, I'd love to be able to afford those players and get them back financially. I think what we can look at right now is just providing them with the very best uh, opportunity to play the game at the right quality. And some players are showing that you know they're, they're prepared to come back here and play here because it's a, it's a better environment and it suits what they want to do. Ultimately, I'd love to see more players back here. Um, but I also can't deny them uh, similar to Paddy Mills, I can't deny them going and uh, and getting the better the better value because it's a short career that they've got, and if it suits them, then that's you know we've got to we've got to continue to do our thing here, and ultimately attract them back. Looking forward, there's been a lot of talk about expansion for next season with different sort of franchises being named as possibly coming into the league. Can you give us a bit of an update on the status of the NBL's expansion plans? We've made no secret of the fact that we, we want to expand if the right, your right opportunities come. And uh, the key ones that we're looking at at the moment are a, a, a team in Brisbane to, uh, to fill out our, our capital city um, status. Uh, and we don't have a team in Brisbane currently. We had the Brisbane Bullets there for 30 odd years, so it makes sense for us to try to get back there. Um, and the second team in Melbourne is, uh, is another option that we've, we've again been actively seeking. Um, both of those are, um, you know, coming to, a, to a, the pointy end, if you like, as far as getting ready for if they're coming in for 2012-13 season. And, um, you know, we're negotiating with, with groups in both of those cities to, uh, to see if we can, we can get it happening. And uh, as again, we're very keen as the NBL and Basketball Australia to make that happen. We offered some of our insider members a chance to ask some exclusive questions from you and we had one from a, a fan called George Edmonds who's asked on the expansion theme whether the Bullets will be back in uh, season 2012-13. How close is the Brisbane franchise to, to being back in the league? Um, look, we've been negotiating and doing a whole lot of work up in Brisbane this, this past 12 months and trying to uh, trying to make sure that we give Brisbane people some uh, taste of basketball. We've had our international games up there. We've had uh, our, um, the Blaze play up there. Um, and it's really important that we try to try to get a team back in Brisbane. As I say, we've been negotiating with, uh, with some parties up there um, and we are getting to the pointy end now of, of seeing whether we can make that happen. What I would say though is that unless it's right, we won't be going forward with it. It's very, very important that we get the right model and the right financial structure because the last thing we want is to, to, uh, to bring a team in that's not physically and financially right and it falls over again. That would be, that would be disastrous for us as a, as a sport and for Brisbane. So, um, you know, we're, we're being very careful and very diligent about how we go forward with that. But, you know, ultimately we'd love to see a team back in Brisbane as soon as possible. We had another fan question from uh, Kirsten Ruddell who's asked, what is the NBL doing or planning to do to give the fan, fans nationwide what we want in regards to live TV coverage? Uh, no question that we'd love to see live TV. And we had live t TV last year. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the deal that, that, that we have, and it's a fantastic deal, we've got a five-year deal with, with uh, Network 10 and 1HD to, uh, to produce basketball. Um, the situation that, that occurred this year with some changes behind the scenes uh, meant that we are, we've, we've taken the decision that um, this season um, that we, we have three games on, on TV over the weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and replay. So, you know, we've got quite a lot of television. If you, if you add that up, we're, we're looking at 12 hours of television uh, each week, which is a, you know, a great outcome for basketball. Unfortunately, it's not live, but we are working with, uh, with Network 10 and Channel 10. As I say, we've, this is year two of a five-year contract, so we've got time to, uh, to work with them and, and see what the, what the options are going forward, because we'd love to see some live TV, and so would they. Uh, it's just uh, the circumstances weren't right for it this year. And final fan question is from Lee Winter and he says, would the NBL be more worthwhile taking advantage of the NBA lock, lockout uh, and looking at players like Kyrie Irving and Wesley Matthews uh, who've expressed interest in playing here? 
look, I think no doubt we'd, we'd love to see that sort of stuff. But again, we've got to be careful of, of the structure that we've got in place here with our league and making sure that we're, we're a financially sustainable league. Um, if those opportunities arise, um, and I'm sure that you know, there's no doubt that, that clubs have been out there sourcing and talking to, uh, to whoever they can to, to take advantage of the lockout. But um, you know, the, the Kyrie Irvings of this world, it maybe it's, it's just not right for them at this point in time. But if the opportunity arises, or if the clubs you know, get out there and seek and find somebody, then yeah, we'd, we'd welcome with open arms because it's, um, it's shown, a, shown to be a great boost for the game in this, in this country and it's a great opportunity if, it, if we can do something. Thank you, Larry. No problems, thanks.